بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا كريم By the grace of Allah عز وجل we come together in this gathering to discuss a topic paramount in importance and that being the pleasure of Allah عز وجل and how to seek that pleasure of Allah عز وجل Rather, but how to win that pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. And what better place to start seeking the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal than the Qur'an itself. So, when I was informed about the topic, I decided that I'm going to try to make this a tafsir of some of the verses which enlighten us on the subject of winning the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. So for that reason, I'm going to start with the recitation of Surah Al-Bayyinah and thereafter systematically make tafsir of some of the verses in Surah Al-Bayyinah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim لم يكن الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب والمشركين منفكين حتى تأتيهم البينة رسول من الله يتلو صحفا مطهرة فيها كتب قيمة وَمَا تَفَرَّقَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْبَيِّنَةِ وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ وَيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيِّمَةِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أُولَئِكَ هُمْ شَرُّ الْبَرِيَّةِ إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أولئك هم خير البرية جزاؤهم عند ربهم جنات جزاؤهم عند رَبِّهِمْ جَنَّاتُ عَدْنٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهِ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ خَشِيَ رَبَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إن الذين آمنوا Verily those that believe الصالحات, and along with their belief, they also do righteous deeds. So the first point that we could look at over here is the fact that if a person believes, just the belief in and of itself is not enough for najat. It's not enough for a person to become saved from the hellfire. And it's not enough for a person to gain the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. Rather, if it's just a mere belief that the individual has, he may be saved from the hellfire, Eventually, but he will be sent to hellfire at least for the purification process. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and he says, وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And those that do righteous deeds. So, these things go hand in hand. Iman and amal. A person has to have the iman. And along with that, he also has to have the amal, which is the actions. And that's why the ulama mentioned that iman is based on three things. قَوْلٌ وَعَمَلٌ وَاعْتِقَادٌ that is based on speaking, is based on saying and uttering the right word, which is Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Along with that, it's also amal. It's also amal, and of course, amal is of several types. The ulama mentioned amal is the action that you do in your salawat. Amal is also that action that you do to actually utter the words Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, and so on and so forth. Wa'atiqad. 
And that action that you do has to always be backed up with i'tiqad as well. It has to be backed up with belief inside. True belief in the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only worthy of all devotion. He is the only worthy of all worship. He is the only deity that should be given all and every bit of our humbleness. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, He says, As-salihat. Ula'ika. These are the people. These are the people, the ones that believed. These are the people, the ones that did the righteous deeds. These are the people, hum khayrul bariya. They're the best of all creation. They're the best of all creation. Now, the word bariya comes from bara'a yabra'u, which means to create. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the bari and we're the bariya. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the khaliq and we're the makhluq. Allah is the creator and we're the ones that have been created. Of course, there's a difference between khalq and bar. The word khalq has a meaning. As for bar, it almost comes from a word that's close to sharpening. So every single creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, that has been taken from the dirt of the ground and then shaped and formed into a shape that can physically walk, talk, look, speak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, those that do have iman and those that do righteous deed, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has only given us, the human beings, that capability, are the best of all of these creations. Every single one of them. All creations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and then formed, eventually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning those that do righteous deeds, those that believe and then follow them up with righteous deeds, these are the best of creation. Now over here, wow, the wow, the ulama, they differed about this wow. Whether it is for bayan, whether it is explaining the iman, that iman in and of itself necessitates the actions. Or whether this wow here is only connecting it to the iman. In either case, dear brother and sister, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obligated upon you along with that belief, actions as well. So it's not enough and it's not sufficient for an individual to say, yes I believe and then he doesn't act. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, we're a nation that acts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Often you see this aman wa amil salihat. So it's a nation that acts. And the brother, when he was introducing al kawthar that's action. When you do come to the masjid, clean the masjid up, that's action. When the Prophet wasallam he went seeking and searching for the woman that would clean up the masjid, he did it because she was acting. So we're a nation that acts. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and he says, Jaza'uhum inda rabbihim. Their recompense, their recompense. Now the interesting thing is, throughout the Qur'an, you will notice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never uses the word jaza yujazi for, non, for, for believers. Jaza yujazi, he never uses it for believers. He only uses jaza yajzi. He only uses the word jaza. Whereas for the non-believers, he would use jaza yujazi. And the reason for that is whenever you have a word that is in the format of fa'ala yufa'ilu, think with me, I don't want to confuse anybody. So whenever you have a word in the format of fa'ala yufa'ilu, there is this concept or this connotation of both parties equi being equivalent in terms of the action being submitted. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives recompense to the kuffar, He gives them just enough to punish them for their actions. Whereas when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters those that believe in Allah and His Messenger into the paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word jaza or jaza yajzi, which doesn't have that same connotation. So it's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you two things. One, O oh dear slave of Allah azza wa jal, one, 
that no matter what you do, at the end of it all, you are in need of the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And that's why when the Sahaba asked the Prophet wasallam, even you, O Messenger of Allah, as in even you, you will not enter into paradise because of your actions, Allah's Prophet wasallam said, لا إلا أن يتغمدني الله برحمتي No, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala envelops me into His mercy. So it is His mercy that will enter us into paradise. That's one. Number two, He's consoling you in that Dear slave of mine, no matter what occurs, no matter what occurs, when you get to Jannah, I'll give you a lot more than what you did. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Those that were patient upon the worship of Allah azza wa jal, those that were patient upon every calamity that ever befell them, those that were patient upon Staying away from the ma'asiyah of Allah Azza wa Jal, the three levels of the sabr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, tells me, O oh dear slave, O oh dear brother, O oh dear sister, that He will give you recompense, wafa bi ghayri hisab, without any calculations. And this is the same thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning, alluding to in this verse, jaza'uhum. And then He doesn't say jaza'uhum. Imagine. He doesn't, he says jaza'uhum, their recompense, and he doesn't mention the jaza' yet. Then he continues on, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he says, عند ربهم, starts off and tells you near their, their Lord. So he wants to connect that jaza' to the Lord first of all. So you understand the greatness therein, you understand the greatness of that jaza' and the magnificence and the grand nature of that jaza before anything, first and foremost. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He started, He said, عند ربهم, near their Lord, in a place when they get to that place where their Lord is, in the heavens. And you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does this for a reason again and again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he's referring to the Kaaba, Baytullah. When Allah's Prophet ﷺ was speaking of the dog, and he asked Allah subhanahu made dua to Allah Azza wa that he uses a dog from amongst his own dogs to go and punish that individual. He said, Allahumma sallit alayhi kalban min kilabik. O oh Allah, make capable upon him a dog from amongst your dog. It wasn't a regular dog that went. It was a predator. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the grand nature of hellfire, Allah says, Narullah. The fire of Allah Azza wa Jal. Al The one that has been kindled and lit. So He's trying to show you the grand nature of this jaza for, through two things. First of all, through the wording that He used, always and forever for believers. And secondly, by attributing it to a place near him. Azza wa Jal. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he continues, and he says, Jannatu Adl. Jannatu Adl. The gardens, as some of us know it as gardens of Eden. Adl means iqama. It means a place to reside, an abode that is never ending. And Jannah comes from the word Jannah, which means to cover up. So that's why you have the word Jinn. They're uncovered, we don't see them. And that's why a snake sometimes, that you just hear, is called a Jan. And that's why a shield is called a Majin. And a magician is not called that for that reason. It's not the same word. And there's a lot of words just like this in the Quran. فَلَمَّا جَنَّ عَلَيْهِ اللَّيْلُ رَآ كَوْكَبَ That when Ibrahim alayhi salam, when the, uh, when, the layl, when the night became evident to him, he saw the stars. فَلَمَّا جَنَّ عَلَيْهِ اللَّيْلُ As in, the night came and covered everything up. 
And that's why a Jannah, a garden is called a garden because you have trees upon trees and you can't see anywhere. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says gardens. As in filled with trees. Covered with trees. And Allah doesn't say Jannah. He says Jannat. And so Allah's Prophet also mentioned that it's not just one Jannah. He said, Jannatani bin Zahab. Aniyatuhuma wa ma fihima. Jannatani min fiddatin aniyatuhuma wa ma fihima. That there's two Jannahs that will be from, two gardens that will be from gold. It's almost as if they've been carved from gold. Carved from gold. Aniyatuhuma. Their utensils and everything they're in. And similarly, there are two Jannahs, two gardens that have been developed from silver, that have been carved from silver, the utensils they're in and everything around it. Of course, the individual that uses the gold, that uses the silver in this life, in manners that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited, may or may not get to have these. May or may not get to taste the food in that silver that's in Jannah. May or may not get to drink from those cups that have been made from, and those utensils that have been made from gold. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he forbid it and he said, what? He said that gold and silver have been forbidden for my nation. For the male from amongst my nation. They are for them in this life and for us in the hereafter. And the qa'idah, always when it comes to the dealings with Jannah, especially, al jaza'u min jins al amal. That the recompense will always be from the same type of sin that the individual has committed. If you drink, dear brother, if you say, you know what, it's just gold plated, then on the day of judgment, you won't have that real gold. The cup that was made of real gold. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and He says, Adil, Iqama, residence. You know, when you're in the world, you find that today you're in a house and you're extremely happy with it. And tomorrow you begin to lose happiness in this house. You're no longer happy with it. And then a third day you say to yourself, let's move out of this place. The town... You know, it's getting really dirty here. It's becoming a ghetto. It's not for me anymore. So you move out of the place. And then you move to a second place. And then you move to a third place. And then you keep on moving. You will move from one station to yet another. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. يَوْمٌ لَنَا وَيَوْمٌ عَلَيْنَا وَيَوْمًا يُسَاءُ وَيَوْمًا يُسَرْ that a day is for us, a day will be against us, a day we will be happy, and another day will be sad. So you go through all of these stages in life. One day, you say to yourself, this is the perfect house, I've made it, and I'm going to sit in here until I die. Another day, something happens. You see that it's not operating the way you wanted it. It's not big enough. It's too small. The room doesn't have a big enough window. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, Adin, it's a place where you will reside and you will never wish for any other place. They will never ever wish for them to have an exchange for this place, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. They will never in the least wish for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to replace this place for them with another place. تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Below it are anhar, rivers that flow below it. Rivers in Jannah 
of course, are of different types. Anharum mimma in ghayri ahsin. Anhar from water that can be appropriated. One can drink it. It hasn't changed. The taste of this water hasn't changed. And anhar also from leban, from milk. Imagine a whole river that flows all of milk. You know, you go a week, three days, four days, five days, and what happens to your milk? خلاص. It doesn't taste good anymore. It's bad for you. If you drink it, you may have to use the bathroom a lot. Isn't that so? How long does cow milk actually last? Three days, four days, if you don't keep it in the fridge, no more than that. Camel milk, however, is better. I always recommend people, if you have camels, then drink camel milk. It's much better. It lasts, it, if, the fridge life that the camel milk has, it's about nine days. You can put it in the fridge for nine days and it wouldn't go bad, unlike the cow milk. And rather, camel milk is even more nutritious than, than cow milk. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Al-Budin, Allah has made ayat in there for people. And a lot of good. The camel. So, you know, the camel milk, you'll find it has 10% more, or 10 times more vitamin C. It has 10 times more iron. It's, in general, it's better. If you do a test at home, if you have, do you guys have camel milk here? No camels? SubhanAllah. So I guess this is not relevant. <laughs> now you can import some camels, go to the zoo. <laughs> Try. Fattakullah <laughs> mastata'atum. Fear Allah as much as you can. They are trying in different countries now, even Western countries, to try to replace cow milk with camel milk. They've been researching on it a lot because they're, they're, they're starting to realize and recognize the benefits within the cow, camel milk. For that reason, a lot of countries, they're, they're starting to make farms where they, where they have camels residing. and you know, But it's a whole different environment for them. So it might take a while before they can actually do this successfully. Anyways, so, anhar min laban, rivers that are made of milk. Lam yataghayyar ta'amuhu, the taste of this milk hasn't changed, it won't change, it won't change. Wa anhar min asal musaffa. See, asal cannot really flow like a river. But this is a special type of asal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared that is musaffa, it has been purified. So it can even flow, clean. Imagine going into a river of asal. And this is not just your average river. It's even beyond what you can think. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he mentioned, as in Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he mentions uh, in his nuniya, anharuha min ghayri ukhdudin jarat. Subhana mumsikiha an al-fayadani. That the anhar, the rivers therein, have been flowing and they continue to flow without a line. Without that curve that the river usually needs, without that depth in the ground. So they flow actually on top of the ground. These rivers in Jannah, they flow on top of the ground, and above those are your houses. Above those are the Jannat. Can you imagine? You can't. That's why the Sahaba used to say, فِيهَا مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرٍ that therein is that which eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, and it never occurred to the mind of an individual, to the heart of an individual. Jannat, Anhar, without any ukhtud, without any barriers, without anything making it flow. Rather, these Anhar, they've been made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. They've been made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that the individual, it's like your house. 
You can decorate it as you please. So, you know, when your wife comes to you and tells you that sofa doesn't look good there anymore, you're like, where am I supposed to put it? On my head? There's no more room in the house. These anhar, you command them, you tell them, move in that direction, and they'll move out of your way. So you can park your burak there. <laughs> Whatever you want, doesn't matter. These anhar have been made so they can move in different directions. So if you want it to go... You know, 20 kilometers east, you tell it and it'll go 20 kilometers east. There's not a problem. They've been made so that they can move at the accord of the individual that resides in that jannah. Anhar. Khalidina fiha abada. Now, you see that whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again he says, Jannatun tajri min tahtiha al anhar. Have you ever thought? of a resort in your mind without water? Have you ever thought of a resort in your mind without trees? Without that sprinkling sound of the water? So that when you wake up in the morning you can hear that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the nature of man. Whenever you want to rest, you think of the Bahamas. Whenever you want to rest, you think of the Hilton Resort, you know, in Indonesia where you have the water flowing under the hut that they give you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew how the individual is and He created the Jannah in the same accord. He knew that usually when a person wants to rest, he wants to feel calm, he wants to come to rest with his nafs, he wants to be around water. He wants to be around trees, Jannat. He wants to be in a place where he can see from, even imagine, Imagine yourself right now in the Bahamas or whatever. I don't know if you guys have something like this in the UK. But you do? The Peak District? That's an inside joke. So imagine yourself above a hut and below you is flowing water. But of course, it's a little bit different because you can tell it to go right and left and come up. It's too low today, the water level is low. You tell it, okay, move up a little bit. <laughs> So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Jannatu Adrin Tajri min tahtiha al-anhar Khalidina fiha abada They will reside therein forever And as in it's a never ending abode It's not for one day, it's not for two days It is a never ending abode And the greatness of this abode lies in the fact That though it's never ending But you will never get bored of it La yabghuna anha hiwala as we mentioned now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after mentioning the jaza, the recompense of this individual, the one that believed and the one that did righteous deeds. He then continues and he says, This is the individual that I have been pleased with. And they have been pleased with me. ذلك لمن خشي ربه. This is for the individual that feared his Lord. So if you seek the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal lies in your devotion to your Lord. Lies, and inshallah ta'ala, all of us are believers. It lies now in your actions. It lies now in you trying to stick with that which benefits you without making excuses. Ihris ala ma'infaq, as the Prophet said. Always be really keen on that which benefits you. And don't become lazy. Simple. Don't become lazy. وَلَا تَعْجَزْ فَإِنْ أَصَابَكَ شَيْءٌ فَلَا تَقُلْ لَوْ أَنِّي فَعَلْتُ كَذَا وَكَذَا رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of this verse, He said, ذلك, this, all of this رضا, all of this رضا of mine, all of this pleasure that I have given of mine, it's for the person 
that fears his Lord. And the unique thing about the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Khashya Rabba, Allah says in another verse, Innama yakshallaha min ibadihi al ulama. Putting these two verses together. Verily, only the scholars from amongst us are the ones that really truly fear Allah Azza wa Jal. Putting these two verses together, some of the ulama, they mentioned that the greatest of all levels that you can attain when it comes to the rida of Allah Azza wa Jal, when it comes to the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, is in seeking none other than knowledge. And that's why one of the salaf, he was sitting, Ibn Wahab, in front of Imam Malik, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he got up and he stood up and he prayed two raka'ah of salah. Of course, nafila, voluntary prayer. And Imam Malik, rahimahullah, wa radiya anhu, he looked at this man, he said, the thing that you have left for that which you have left is better than what you have left it for. As in that knowledge that you sat and, so, and sought, that knowledge was more beloved in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal than your prayer that you're praying. And that's why a lot of the ulama, according, including Imam al-Shafi'i, Abu Hanifa and others, they all considered the knowledge, the seeking of knowledge, sitting amongst the majalis of ilm, upon which the rahmat of Allah, the mercy of Allah comes and the malaika come. حَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةَ The malaika come and they sit about, about them. And rahma comes and comes all over them. They said that this type of majlis is more beloved in the sight of Allah than even voluntary prayers and voluntary actions. Though voluntary prayers in and of itself, it is the best voluntary action in terms of the good deeds that are actually considered ibadat. It's better than siyam, it's better than other things that are voluntary. as But even that, Imam al-Shafi'i, Abu Hanifa and other scholars, they would consider this even greater. Because it was because of this individual seeking and then passing the knowledge that the animals got their rights. That we learned how the Prophet ﷺ used to deal with the children so the children, by nature, by their existence, it's almost as if they pray for this individual. And that's why when Allah subhanahu Allah's Prophet وسلم, he said in that hadith that even the fish within the depths of the ocean make istighfar for the person of knowledge, they did so because because of the knowledge that was spread because of this individual people realized the rights that the fish have. People realized how to treat the fish. People realized how to walk the earth. People realized how to deal with their parents. So it's as if the existence of everything is making istighfar for the talib ilm. And it's such a noble act that even the angels come and out of humility put their spread their wings for this individual. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ And as we mentioned the connection here, the greatest level of it all, as Ibn Jama'ah, al-Shafi'i, in his book, تَذْكِرَةُ السَّامِعُ الْمُتَكَلِّمِ explained that the connection here illustrates for us that the greatest of all statuses in terms of pleasure and pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in knowledge and seeking that knowledge and delivering that knowledge. Now, Allah's Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sought that knowledge. إِنَّكَ لَتُلَقَّ الْقُرْآنِ You are being spoon-fed almost the Qur'an. مِلَّدٌ حَكِيمٍ عَلِيمٍ From an extremely wise and an extremely knowledgeable Lord, where is the wisdom in spoon feeding the Quran to Allah's Messenger? Why is it that Jibreel has to come down? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to teach you and I to continue that tradition of learning and teaching.
Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wished, if it was if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wished, he could have just put all of the Quran in Allah's, Allah's Prophet Sallallahu head, and that would be the end of that. We didn't need to have someone spoon feeding the message to the Prophet. ﷺ. But Allah says, Quran. You are being taught the Quran. And also in the fact that he used the word tulaqqa al-Qur'an is another thing. And that is that we have to go back to that path of a talaqqi Seeking from scholars who sought from scholars, who sought from scholars, who sought from scholars, all the way down to the Prophet So that in the middle of it all, the corruptions that occurred, we try to avoid. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gave the people of knowledge the status not just in this verse, radiyallahu anhum wa radu'an, connected with the verse, inna ma yakshallaha min ibadihi al-ulama. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave that same status, rather an even higher status, when He said, shahid allahu annahu la ilaha illahu wal malaikatu wa ulu al-ilmi qa'iman bil qist. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bear witnessed and the angels. And right after the angels, he says, ilm," And those that have knowledge. Standing for justice. So imagine a group, imagine being amongst the mark, imagine being amongst the group of a people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in the same testimony as himself and the malaika shahid allah annahu la ilaha illahu wal malaikatu wa ulu al ilm qa'iman bil qist and a hadith that is extremely popular in this regard is the hadith where the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says yahmilu hadha al ilm من كل خلف عدوله that this knowledge is been carried it will be carried the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he compares or he puts the witness of his own and the malaika and the angels together with the people of knowledge it's as if he is showing that these people of knowledge are the ones that are upright a couple of months ago or a couple of weeks ago, I was giving a talk and a person got up and started asking a question. And his question was, he was basically questioning the people of knowledge. He was saying that don't you think that all of the confusion that is in the world today amongst the Muslims, don't you think it's because of the people of knowledge? That you have one shaykh, he comes, he gives one opinion, and then you have another one, he comes and gives his another opinion, and then you have a third, he opinionates as well. So don't you think that the people of knowledge are the ones that are responsible for this? Well, of course the answer is no, because why? If it wasn't for these same people of knowledge that took from the Prophet wasallam and passed the deen down for us, if it wasn't for these same people of knowledge, then what? Then we wouldn't have the deen. And if we go and try to play and try to mess with the credibility of these people of knowledge, in essence, we are not doing any more, as Ibn Hazm alluded to, we're not doing any more than playing with the credibility of the deen. Because upon their shoulder was it passed down to us. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he says there, يَحْمِلُ هَذَا الْعِلْمِ This knowledge will be carried by every group of generations that will come. مِنْ كُلِّ خَلَمْ خَلَفْ From every successor, by the ones that are upright. So usually, the most upright of them all are the people that seek knowledge. So if you seek, dear brother, dear sister, the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, I invite you to join the ranks of those that seek knowledge. I invite you to join the ranks of those that do not find befit for them to be amongst those that are ignorant. 
And a great opportunity, as the brother was mentioning, is the course that is coming up by Al Kawthar. Though this was an ad, it wasn't planned. But I'm just making the ad anyways. And with that being said, I'll conclude my talk. If anyone has any questions, they can ask. <laughs> you mentioned the uh, gold and silver. Yeah. Uh, gold and oil is you know, forbidden for the man. Yes. Uh, you mentioned silver as well, so just a clarification. That... Jazakallah khair for clarifying. The brothers uh, mentioning that I mentioned that gold and silver are considered forbidden. So is it gold and silver? For the silver, the men are allowed to have no more than the ring. No more than the ring. So if a person is wearing a chain, it will be considered impermissible. If a person is wearing anything else like a bracelet, all of these things are considered impermissible. However, for the women, gold and silver are considered permissible entirely for anything that is considered zina, for anything that is considered beauty. However, anything other than that, like utensils, pencils, pens, or any of those things, they're also considered impermissible, gold and silver alike, for a woman as well. Thank you. The brother is asking about practical advice. I gave practical advice, the Al-Kawthar courses. Fairly practical. Yeah, the practical advice would be to, uh, first of all, look at what's available for you. I can give you a lot of advice on how you can go about and seeking knowledge and which levels to take and all of that. But the first and foremost, see what's available for you. Uh, and then based on that, you can decide what you can do. Secondly, when you do seek knowledge, when you do seek knowledge, dear brother, dear sister, after you do finish seeking that knowledge, don't just read the book in the class and then put it, put it away. After that, never coming back to it again. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it came to the salawat, before the salawat, He put sunan for us. After the salawat, He put sunan for us. When it came to siyam, before siyam, He had what for us? The month of Sha'ban, where there is fast as well. After the month of Ramadan, he also put these six days of Shawwal for us as well. So you'll notice a constant in the Sharia ah is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes for his slave to go into the state of worship, he puts a preface and something to finish it up. So it's not that as soon as you get up from the act of worship, you leave and you do nothing else. You see that if you pick up your books, you prepare yourself for the class, you prepare yourself for the course, and you're ready to intake whatever the teacher or the instructor or the shaykh is going to be delivering, that heart will become even more receptive. Thereafter, if you don't just pack your books, rather when you go home, you also begin to review that which you learned. And right after. And that's the best time. Some of the ulama mentioned that it's not even good to take notes in the class. So that during the class, you give your full attention to what is being delivered to you. And after you're done with that, as soon as, by the way, only practice this if you practice it all the way. As soon as you're done with that, you go home and you try to write down everything you can remember. And you'll notice by practice, this activity will become more and more you know, better in your mind. You'll be able to recall all of that information that you had gathered in the lecture and then thereafter, you wrote it all down. So just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, you know, legislated for us voluntary actions after prayer, after siyam of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes for us to do this in every act of worship. And as we mentioned, seeking knowledge is no more than an act of worship. So after you finish seeking, go home, don't pack your books, read, review, write, consult. Exactly. Uh, was where you mentioned that believers who haven't been firm in following the path will spend some time with the health to as a purification process. Yeah. Now, if you come across you know, friends or family or acquaintances who say, well, I'm a Muslim, you know, I, you know I've said the Kalma, I've said the Shada, I'm going to go to heaven. What do you say to them if they're on that firm belief and if they well, Salah, you know, I read my Salah, but it's not firm, and you know, keep me so, but you know, I miss a couple of days. So, how would you okay. uh, tackle that situation? The brother is asking about a person who 
for example, begins to argue in this manner and says that a person that is a believing per individual, yet he is impious. He doesn't pray his salawat or he prays his salawat but not in a good manner. Or he does, he does other haram actions. This individual will go to Jahannam, the hellfire, and then will be taken out of hellfire after he's purified. So someone comes to you and says, you know what, I don't mind going through the purification process. Of course, the fact of the matter is that Al-Imanu bayn al-Khawfi wa raja That Iman is always between fear and hope. So this person has a problem when it comes to hope. So when he has a problem when it comes to hope, you have to cure it by giving him the description of hellfire, by giving him things that will make him fear his Lord more. Oh, yeah. The brother is asking if seeking knowledge would be considered the top thing to seek Allah's pleasure. So long as that knowledge is acted by, uh, acted upon, it would be considered the top. As for the individual that doesn't act upon his knowledge, it came though in a hadith that is da'if, but the meaning is correct. مَنْ ازْدَادَ عِلْمًا وَلَمْ يَزْدَدْ هُدًا مَزْدَادَ مِنَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بُعْدًا that whoever increases in knowledge, yet doesn't, increases, doesn't increase in guidance, he's not increasing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except in distance. So, so long as that knowledge is put together with action, this is the tip of the iceberg. This is the best per thing that a person can do.